put my glasses on. No, then you can't see your face. Very true. <laughs> Let's just say I'm dewy right now, but I'm actually sweating, but what it is what it is. Um, say hi, Brunses. Mm -hmm. Hi, Brunses. Say hi, Brunses. Hi, Brunson. No, that's true. <laughs> Bronze, hi bronzes and me and my nana's sisters hold my hands and we what get along you mean along. your nana's sisters your nana hasn't got any sisters no you're my sister oh, no Mrs. not on your grandmother hi bronzes this is miss blake butler and i'm here with columbiana butler my nanny say hello bronzes hello and hello. bronzes Bronzes. Yeah, oh, like bronzer. Oh, bronzes. Hello, bronzes. There we go. Crusty snake skin jacket, as always. Never take it off. This is Miss Marley Butler. Um, we are doing a question air video. This is about my life and who I am. And yeah, as you do. You hope you're good. You got the flushes. Yeah, sweating a bit. When did you first discover I was a little different to others? Would you say? When's mm. the first time you're like, this you one's going to be different? When you were three years old. Three? That's Two or three. Mm. What was it? You were just different. I remember once I took us to a carnival down carnival. at Semaphore. When we were younger? Mm. Mm. And uh, you just wanted an ice cream. Yeah. So I said to the girls, what do you want? And you said, I have a pink one, please. <laughs> And you did, that's Sounds exactly good. what you said. I'll have a pink one, please. Love a strawberry. Look, we're still on the strawberry bandwagon as well. Do we have any anything in with strawberry milk? That's so cute. And we, I can remember, you never ever brought kids home from school. No, I never did. Never did. Never had friends over. No. Because the other friends I was friends with were girls, really, as well. Yeah, that's right. So. You lived with two sisters. Mm. You knew every colour of lipstick they ever wore <laughs> by the time we were about seven. By the time I was seven, that'd be yeah. right. Blake Butler, me away at its finest. And you had Zoe's tutu on. By how old was I? Oh, I don't know. Four or five, I start. <laughs> anyway, she'd been going to calisthenics. Oh, yeah. My sisters was... were all dancers and stuff, so they had all yeah. like the good beaded outfits, like yeah. the good tutus, diamonded crops. It was in my element, all the nice weaves. And we'd come over for the concert, Poppy and I. Yeah. We'd come over for the concert. We couldn't find you, but here you were, flirt, flirt, flying around the backyard with Zoe's tutu on, doing all these dance steps. You could, you could have done half the calisthenics class better. Than I knew the all the, I knew all, all the steps. steps. Yeah. When I would go with my sister to a dance class. Yeah. We used to go to Holly's place and play out. Yeah, there. I remember. <laughs> my first know. girlfriend in reception. God, I'd always go to her house and I'd dress up with her. She'd have all these tutus and like sparkly wigs. And I remember her mum, um, she just had a huge trunk full of all these costumes. And like, oh, no. no, what happened was we had a time and she dressed up as a pirate and I dressed up as a fairy. And I remember that was in reception. <laughs> and I was in a blue tutu and she was in like a pirate <laughs> outfit. And then I remember, I remember like, like three years later or something, I remember she showed someone and I was furious. Couldn't speak to her again. What was your initial reaction when you first found out I was getting surgery? Truthfully, too. Yeah, truthfully. I was a bit scared for you. Yeah. And a bit worried. Mm -hmm, for sure. It's a big because procedure. you were only about 18 mm -hmm. when I found out and I was just concerned. 18? Well, yeah, but you're only 21 now. I haven't got surgery in May. Huh? I've, I've got surgery in May. Well, you're only 18 when you finally decided to do it, wasn't oh, it? Oh, like, oh, do you mean as in, um, no, no, no. I mean, like, getting facial surgery. Like, I only, and that, like, I only discussed that in last year, in, like, last year, the start of last year was, no, not even the start. It was, like, after my birthday, I reckon. I reckon around April last year is when I decided, or not decided, I knew it was. Yeah. Hold on. I knew I had a procedure going, not a, I didn't have a procedure going on for a while, but obviously I had my own mind of thought of what I was going to be doing, but announcing it was a different story, um, like telling people. I don't, I don't even think I told you either. Did Zoe probably you tell you? Told I think me. Zoe no. told you. Zoe my sister lives did. here um, with my nan, so 
yeah, I'm in contact with them a lot. So I guess anything, I guess when I talk to my sister a lot, she obviously tells Miss Manor. But, um, yeah. When were you first aware of me coming out as transgender? Because I never told you, I don't think. No, you didn't. I reckon Zoe probably told you. I don't know. I think I always knew you probably would. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I reckon I came out properly, I feel like. It hasn't been that long, really. Maybe a, two years with you. Like my man always knew I were how it was like I was how I was and stuff, but I never like clarified it really, did I? No. I was just kind of going through my own journey of discovery, you know. Question: Were you in Melbourne found it hard? A little bit di difficult, yes. yeah. Yeah, because yeah, we didn't sure. see you a lot, so mm -hmm. you know. It's like the times you were. Yeah, a bit I got to Adelaide as best I could, and then when Pop died, well, you know, mm. sort of altered things a lot. Yeah. I feel like my family kind of assumed I was just a gay boy that would dress up womanly. Well, that's what, what I, I think. Yeah, I, that's, that's I think, what I, think I think a lot of, because I never really discussed it that much. No, so I think no. a lot of my family just assumed that I was a male that would just dress feminine and look feminine. Yeah. But I knew deep down that's never who I was. And when I would, you know, I would never, I would go to family, when I'd go to family events like stuff and I'd be, you know, presented as a woman. But I would, you know, I obviously never had the conversation of what my gender is. So being referred to as he and him and as a brother, obviously, because that's how the, mm -hmm. that's how it was at the time, because I never came out properly. So, so my man's a Catholic Christian, and she never actually showed any disrespectful signs ever to any sort of no. LGBT community. Everybody to their own. Yeah, and I never, so I've always been someone that would be able to tell my man, anything I wanted, like we had, yes. a, we've always had a really good, really very good close relationship, relationship. Always, yeah, always. So I would never be able to feel shy to really tell it. That's why I'm confused why I didn't actually properly tell you. I'm not Catholic or Christian myself personally, but I feel like there is a big misconception that a lot of Catholic and Christian people are very against all that stuff. But it's not true no, in all the cases, not, is it? Not in this day and age. Yeah, everyone's got their own yeah. opinions and yeah. beliefs and that it is what it is. Yeah. What the question was referring to that was, um, was it hard for you at the beginning to accept my transition due to your religious beliefs? No, not to my religious beliefs. Mm. I was just nervous for you. Yeah. Of what? Of how you how would my life take it and, and you know, come through it all. Yeah. I thought perhaps you were too young when you first did it, but that was up to you. Yeah. You just know when the time is right. I guess everyone's journey is different. You know, some people don't even transition to, you know, Caitlyn Jenner, she didn't transition to 65. I mean, she's problematic. We don't stand people that. Mm -hmm. But I can remember watching a couple of films. Mm -hmm. One was in England, done in England. Mm -hmm. And, um,. That helped me come mm -hmm. to terms with what you were doing mm -hmm. because I watched the films right through yeah. and their parents were happy for them and that and I thought, well, that's how it'll be for Blake. Oh, we'll all be happy. She's a cutie. We'll all be happy for you. What was it like adjusting to me transitioning? So backstory is, so my nan has dementia, so she's very... No, I have not. Yes, you do. No, I haven't. Okay. I just forget things. She forgets things. So um, sometimes, you know, my name will slip up here and there, but it's fine. She corrects herself, or I will as well. And this, I'm not. Oh, I don't yeah. get. I don't get offended by no. that at all because I am aware of um, my nan's, You know, and she'll just. She just says him or something. She'll be like she, which is good because yeah. a lot of people just try to. They'll just sweep it under the rug. She makes it a lot worse. But hey, it's. It's a process for everyone. It's a transition for everyone. Um, I think you're great. You know, you have to sit up, but it's fine. And I love you too. And I love you. She's 84 years old, but she's looking 62. 83. Oh, she's about to turn 84, my bad. You know, you're looking, you're looking 46. Oh, isn't he beautiful? Isn't she beautiful, Sue? So there I go. There she goes. <laughs> <laughs> I was her first grandson, but it's now her, her first transgender granddaughter. That's right. I'm a first trans and I love granddaughter. A daughter, a trans and I just granddaughter. hope everything goes right for you in life, my love. And you've got to learn to talk to people when you want 
I hope for that. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't never ever go yeah. alone. I never, never go to people for help. I always vent in my own problems. I've never been someone to go to others no. to like no. come to help. I've always been very independent in that sense. I don't know. I feel like I've always been my own best like psychologist, but then it's very good to vent out your feelings and emotions to someone very close to you because they get a better understanding about it all. Um, but really, for your age, you are very well-minded up here. I am, aren't I? Very intelligent. Yes, you are. I know what I'm talking about. And very beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chiang. But if you don't leave that hair alone, I'm going to cut it off. <laughs> She's clocked me all day for going like this all day with my hair, but I can't help with the frizzy humidity. So where you got any lift? I oh, know. The humidity in Melbourne is just off the charts here. It's bloody just... It's like Brisbane or I haven't even been to Brisbane, but it's like Brisbane weather. Actually, we've never really even spoke about it before, so it was good that mm, we spoke yeah, about that. Yeah. So I was curious as well myself to find out these well, this things. this is the first time you actually, you know, I think you've actually yeah, talked about it. We've actually spoke about it for the first time. And I was so nervous when I knew you were coming. I thought, I said to my next door neighbour, Yvonne, I said, I don't know what to expect. I don't know how to treat her. Got it there you go. She said her. And I was so worried, nothing had changed. She was still my... Mm. Still our grandbaby. Still my grandbaby. The same baby from day And one it has three. been so easy to talk to her. And we've got on famously. Mm. Famously. Yeah. Because yeah. a lot of... I know there's a lot of grandmothers that, you know... Not grandmothers, but grandparents in general that find it a lot harder to understand. But I'm lucky that I have an angel of a grandmother. And she's got an angel of a granddaughter of her, obviously. Yes, I have. She went from three, she went from two granddaughters to three grandsons to three granddaughters to two grandsons. Ain't that the way? And it's a shame they're not all living over here. Imagine if we all lived in Melbourne. Mm. That would be something. Well, I will be soon. Mm. Um, and that invited me to live with her, so I'm going to be sharing I a room with not. her. I did not. Just kidding. That loves me the most. No, I don't. <laughs> You're all equal. Equal, allegedly. Everything. Yeah, that's our story of what we do. Um, everyone loved you in the last video you were in. You were here picking up the dog poop with a tongue. <laughs> still doing it. There's still love. She's still daily rituals on it again. She can't get away from it. She's got the tongues picking up the dog poo. This is a ritual, daily ritual. <laughs> anyway, we're going to have to let you go because we have some to mashed... put our mashed potatoes on. Yeah, we've got to peel some potatoes. I'll peel yes. them. You mash okay. them. All right. So yeah, we're gonna do that, aren't we? Mm. But thank you for tuning in. Thank you. Bye, Bronzes. Say goodbye, Bronzes. Say it. Say Francis. Bronzes. What? What's Bronzes? You know Bronzer? Uh, makeup, Bronzer. Oh. Bronze legs. Oh, well, see, I don't use makeup like you do. Are we yep. all finished? Yeah, I'm gonna have to pluck your whiskers after, though. No.